This episode of the Slug Love Devlog is brought to you by Audible. Go to audible.com slash to start your free trial today. And welcome back to Devlog. In the last part I worked on Axe Combat and Axe Combat Strings. And in this part I work on a new dodge input, a new dodge dash mechanic, um, making movement more fast and fun. And uh, then I broke a bunch of stuff and I had to fix it. The first thing I did was update the snap turning. This is the feature when if you're running very quickly or moving in one direction and then you press the opposite input, your character will snap turn to that new direction. I have now updated this so it looks a bit better. The first thing I did is add two new animations. The first is a snap turn normal and the first is a snap turn when you are sprinting. And the next thing I did was add two new snap turn uh, logic systems. The way it worked before was it had a specific logic for stopping the character when snap turning and then um, assigning a, a set amount of value after the player has snap turned. The way it works now is that as the character is snap -turn turning, which is them stopping going in one direction and moving to another direction, there is a dampening of speed applied to them and then there is a new speed applied that they will build to. So the player is stopped from their current speed and then new speed is then built into and their um, velocity amount is changed so if they were going left then it would be changed to right. Um, this is all adjusted so the way it worked before it was very quick and very sudden and now there is adjustment to it based on timers and floats and values and etc etc. The implementation of this and the change from the current system was wicked simple bro. Um, all I had to do was because it's a substate system I just input values in based on the substate system values yada yada yada. It's just another substate system. It's the same way as they all work. It's just specific values being added to the character when they're in these specific states. There's two reasons for wanting to change this. The first being I didn't think the original snap turn animation looked very good, so I wanted to reanimate it and make it a lot better. It's now a lot quicker. It has more weight conveyed to it. It looks better. I just like how it looks overall now. The second reason um, was that I wanted a specific snap turn animation for when you are moving quickly, as in when you are sprinting. The reason for this is that when you would um, snap turn beforehand, it was very sudden and it instantly um, changed your movement direction and it um, didn't really convey the weight of the character or the speed you were moving at because it would stop you instantly. So now when you snap turn when you have been sprinting, you actually carry on your momentum and movement and you follow through with that. Um, speed momentum and then you have to adjust to your new momentum and the animation um, shows this by being a lot more dram dram dramatic with your adjustment to your new speed there's a lot more skidding and you trying to adjust to um, sprinting once again. There's more weight, emphasis, and follow through from your actual speed, so it really gives the emphasis that beforehand, before you started snap turning, you were going very quickly. You were go you were running, going so fast. The next thing I did was update the dodge mechanic. The way it worked before is you press dodge, you did a dodge roll. Now there is um, two new features. The first being that the dodge in air is completely different and has different logic for it. The second being the dodge itself is completely different and, and has different logic for it. And the third being that the dodges can now be transitioned into a new state called dashing. Although technically dashing is just a sort of dodge, but don't worry about that too much. So the same way as the snap turn system, the dodge system is completely reworked to use different values. Now the player has a sub sub system when dodging. The first is this is the preparation for a dodge. So when you press dodge, you don't instantly dodge. Um, you don't instantly start moving. There is a delay before you start moving based on if you're on the ground or in the air. Um, this could be 0.1 seconds for this example, but it's probably not. It's probably a different value. This has the character waiting for 0.1 seconds slowing down from their current speed and adjusting to not moving. Then once this time has passed, we transition into our dodge movement. Our force is added in our movement direction, or if we are not pressing a movement direction, we just go backwards. We move in this direction, and then as our dodge time goes on, we lurp to a slower, um, slowed down speed. The normal dodge being that you, once you end the dodge, um, your current speed at the end is zero. We also have overrides for how much we can move, how much control we have, so as you are dodging in any direction, you could move left or right or 
forward or backwards or change your direction that you are moving in, but during a regular dodge, you cannot change your direction very much. You can, however, change your direction very much in a dash. If you hold your dodge input down, holding down circle, and are pressing an input on your controller, as in a directional input, after you have performed your first input of a dodge, halfway through the dodge, you will transition into a dash. A dash is the same way as a dodge mechanic, it has the same uh, input values that are read the same way in the scripting, they are just different input values. So the dash, you don't actually slow down as you are dashing, and the dash you um, can build speed, you're technically stuck always building speed when you're dashing, you're always moving when you're dashing, and the character has this very floaty sort of slide to them, and the character can skid around the area, they have a lot more um, movement to them, but they have less control, so this is a sort of dodge when you want to continue moving, and you want to continue dodging out of the enemy's way, you want to continue with your speed, you don't want your speed to be killed when you are dodging, so you hold down the input and then your dodge will go into this dash. Once this is finished, you will either um, transition into sprinting, or if you let go of your input at any point, you will transition out of the dodge input normally, based on whatever your current speed is. So if your speed was um, less than sprinting, you wouldn't be sprinting, and if it was more than sprinting, you'd be set sprinting. The point is, if you let go of your input, you stop um, dashing. The reason I added this is because I wanted combat to be a lot more faster. Um, I wanted it to be a lot more quick and floaty and fun, because I like quick combat, so having the dodge also function as a movement option um, serves that very well. It has replaced the current slide mechanic. The way it worked before was if you held um, your dodge input, you would go into a slide. This is sort of the same thing, if you hold your dodge input, you go into this um, floaty, skidding around dash mechanic. In terms of visuals, there are four different dodge animations, you dodging left, right, forward, or backwards, and then as you are dashing, there are four different animations that are blended between based on your velocity, if you are dashing forward, left, right, or backwards, so if I dashed left and then changed my direction, uh, my character's animations would change as they are adjusted to the speed. I really like this method of animating, um, it's just different poses that are blended between based on velocity, but it makes the animations look like I've put much more thought and effort into them than I actually have. It's just the characters blending between animations. And as the character is dashing, they are making a skid trail go along the ground, um, they're kicking up dust, it's sort of them floating through the air, and I'm sure I'll add some lore explanation as to why the character can just float like this, but this is sort of the impression of the character is going very quickly. As you are dashing, um, you're kicking up a lot of dust behind you. Dashing in air works very similar to the dashing on ground systems, in the sense that it's the same system, um, it just has a few overrides, it uses different input values, so dashing in air could have a um, slower readying time, it could move faster, it could have less control, um, just things like this, different float values are being inputted into the character whenever they are in the, gr in the ground or in the air and dodging. There is also different animations played, but they're pretty much the same thing. You either dodge left, right, up or down, and then you blend into a dash animation when you are in the air. If you have landed from your dash animation from being in the air, you will transition straight into sprinting instead of continuing to dash. Because you've just landed on the ground, the dash is probably over, you should start moving now, you should start running probably. Originally I was going to make the system so you could only dodge in air, and you cannot transition into a dash while you are in the air, but um, that wasn't fun to do. And also I was playing Scarlet Nexus, popular videos game at the time of designing this, and there's an air dodge in that game, but it's very, um, it stops you after you finish it, and every single time I use it I'm always kind of disappointed that I cannot continue to move quickly um, once dodging an air, so I wanted to make my dodge more satisfying than that game's air dodge. It might not read very well um, as a gameplay, mechanic, or it might not make much sense that you can, for some reason, once dodging an air, transition into this very um, speedy mechanic, but it's more fun for the player, so I don't particularly care very much. I then started to work on changing the game's overall speed values, this being the actual value of speed that the player moves at. 
than the overall momentum of building speed and gaining speed. With the game having more of a focus on combat, I felt like having the player have to build up to speed and um, maintain their speed didn't really make much sense, or it wasn't very um, fun and engaging, so like the dodge um, dodge dash function where the player can um, build speed and skid around, the player now has a overall increased base speed, you can move a lot more faster, you can build speed a lot faster as well, there isn't um, that much time before the player is at a speed where they are running quickly, and then the player is normally building speed towards when they can start sprinting, which is also incredibly faster than it used to be. Essentially, the player's overall speed values are increased. The reason for this is because they like fast-paced combat. I felt like the movement before wasn't really, um, fun. For fast based combat, it needed to move faster, so I just increased the values, made a new animation for sprinting very quickly, and now the player move quick. I then made an updated player model character. To address the elephant in the room, this isn't going to be used in the final game, even slightly. Not even at all. My idea for the final game is where the player would be able to customize their character with equipment setups, and those equipment setups would give the player um, different uh, perk systems or different stats, so you'd um, mix and match your build based on that. Um, so the actual base player for the final game would be sort of like the Splatoon one, where they are just um, naked at base, and then you equip armors onto them to make them so they have certain perks or abilities based on those armors. But I wanted to make a fun character for thumbnails, so I made a fun character for the thumbnail. I gave them this fun gas mask so I didn't have to animate the player's face at all, because I didn't feel like doing that. And then I gave them this cool um, anime pointed hairstyle that I like a lot, and then I felt like the design was way too edgy with the gas mask and the pointed anime hair, so I gave them this fun little jumpsuit and puffy jacket with sleeves and a mini skirt, and then I thought that was way too silly with the rest of the outfit, so I gave them these giant boots and gloves to make it more cartoony, and then I thought it was too serious again, so I made the character pink. I like this design a whole lot. It's a weird mess. I actually quite like this color scheme a whole lot. I think the dark colors of the character's um, skin and also eyes because they have black eyes for some reason really um, complements well with the very light pale colors of the bright pinks or the darker reds or the bright yellows and oranges of the outfits. I really actually quite like the design a lot, even though it came from me just playing about with character designs and having fun. Um, and I also think it does still look a little bit too edgy. Um, I do still really like this character design. Um, I really like the color scheme. It has fingerless gloves. Did I mention that? It has fingerless gloves. The optimal way to wear gloves. Um, I like the skirt. I like the little, little jacket thing. I'm hard pressed to think of a aspect of this character design that I don't actually like, even though I think it's pretty silly. So I'm just going to use this in devlogs for the next three months until I actually add character armor and customization. I then got real sick and lost my voice and can no longer record the rest of the devlog features. Luckily they were all pretty basic. Oh well, see you next week.